Welcome back to Green Bee Explorer. My name's Alyssa, and we are making acorn squash soup today. I have four acorns here, and I'm really excited. I've made this once before. This is my second time making it, and it's, it's going to be a blast. I, it's one of my favorite soups now. I'm, I'm addicted. So the big difference with making soups now is I've been using a pressure cooker. Usually it's, you would make stu uh, soups, especially acorns and many other squashes, you would have to start them in the, stove, in the oven to soften them up and then take them to the stove and cook and prep everything else there. It makes a big mess, a lot of dishes, you know, a lot of uh, pans and pots. So this, the pressure cooker, it does everything in one step, in a sense. And I'm going to walk you through every step I took, all the ingredients I used, all the spices. And I love the pressure cooker because it gives me a chance to multitask and step away from it, get something else done. So let's get started. I'm excited. These acorn squashes came straight from my garden. I grow an organic garden of vegetables and fruits. And it's, it's a ton of fun, and I came out with a ton of these from the garden by growing organic. The one thing I always make sure to do is before I eat or prep anything, I always give a nice, good washing from any dirts and debris that could have fell, fallen on it with hot water. Once they're nice and clean, nothing on them, shake off the water, and set them aside. These ones have already been washed, so let's get to the cutting. So the first step in the acorn squashes is you have to cut them open and dig out the seeds. I choose to use a butcher knife and I, use, I choose to start at the top and start cutting. One thing about my knife, it's a very cheap knife, so I had to spend a little bit more time trying to cut it. Those of you who have more, you know, fancier knives, you might cut this a little faster. Just be very, very careful with your fingers. So I'm just showing you the steps I take. It's just a little bit of sawing and we're gonna get it cut through. This is what you have to deal with with getting cheaper knives. <laughs> Definitely had to invest in much better knives. But here, you can see it's starting to crack now. And there we go. So then I turn it this way. I do the same exact thing. hard spot. I'm going to try in a different spot. There we go. And now it has a little bit more give. There we go. Now we have it open. So now I'll show you how to gut it. Now, the next step I take is you have to get all, the, all these seeds and, a, and the soft center. So I'm just using an ice cream scoop and I just scoop everything out. Put the extra on a paper towel. We'll throw this away. Or as I like to do, sometimes I just toss it right back in my garden or into my compost. Just 
just enough so you see there's not much soft center in there anymore. So, and I'll do the same thing to this one and to my other ones as well. I'm not going to walk you through each one, but you kind of get the idea. So we'll go through this and get the centers out of most of them. And I'll show you how to cut the rest of these. That way they can fit easily in the pressure cooker. So we scooped out the rest. Now I'm going to show you how you should cut the last few so they fit inside the pressure cooker. Nice about inch in size. This is just because I don't have good knives. And this one I'll just cut in half. So you'll be able to eye it up once you make you know, these yourself and the size you want to make inside your pressure cooker. And I'll go through and do all these steps for the rest of the acorn squash and then I'll show you the next steps after this. You don't have to watch me cut and gut every one of these. So. So our next step is getting the squash inside. So I'm trying to keep the skin down. So I'll put a few in here on the bottom. And then what I'll also do is put some in with the trivet. Just get it to sit nicely. There we go, sitting good. Grab some more. Again, they're sitting face up, the skin is down. There we go. I'm trying to keep them from not sitting on top of each other. Sometimes you can't avoid that, but that's okay. So, just washing my hands a little bit. Usually for acorn squash, I've done two cups of water for two squashes. So kind of a cup of water per squash. In this case, I have four squashes. So now I'm gonna be adding about four cups of water. I'll look inside and see where the water's sitting. I might add a little bit more. The water doesn't hurt. Um, so, it just helps to soften everything up. But that's, you just have to add water. No, no olive oil, no, nothing like that. At least not yet. I think I was at three there? Uh, let's go with, I'm assuming four. I kind of lost count, but I'm assuming this is my four. I see where the water is. You know what? I'm just going to give it an extra touch. I'm going to add one more. Make it five. So five cups of water. Okay, you can take a look. You can kind of see the water in there, right there. So, and next step is we're gonna take our lid, place it back on. I love that sound, it's so much fun. Then, uh, this is an insignia, so the options are a little bit different. I prefer cooking with chicken. Chicken is usually the high, so I press chicken. And we're going to go with 20 minutes. Because there's a few more in there, we did 20 minutes for just two of them. I'm going to make it longer because we had a... Oh, hold on. I'm going to tell stop. It started because I took too long. So we're going to do chicken. Then I'm going to say cook time. That will tell me, tell it what time I actually want. It's always preset for 20, but I'm going to set it up. Let's do, I'm going to say, you know, I'm going to say 25. No, I'm going to say 20, 28. So 28 for the four squashes and we'll press start. Make sure your little steam tab is always pushed forward, uh, sorry, backwards, backwards. So 
This means it's open, this means it's closed. Keep it closed whenever you're cooking. And we'll give it its time. And guess what, I can walk away. Yes, best part, yay. So my next step while the acorn squash is cooking in the pressure cooker, I'm gonna chop up some red onion. A lot of recipes say use white onion. I prefer red onion, in my opinion it has more flavor. It's just one of my favorites. So for two acorn squashes, use one onion. In my case, we're using four acorn squashes, so I'm gonna use two onions. Trust me, they're not overbearing, they gave great flavor. So I'll chop these up, and I'll show you my next step of putting them in my little ninja bullet. So we'll chop these up. I like to take the first outer skin off. It's just my opinion, how I like to cook. Sometimes it doesn't want to come off. There we go. So one, two, chop this one in half. And I will have to dice these up a little bit smaller to fit in my little ninja that is used for mincing. So in the end, you are mincing these. Okay. So, as you can see, there's not much room in here. So, I'm going to break these down just in half again. And then I'll show you once I chop the rest of them, I'll show you them piled inside. So after I diced up all the onion, I'm going to put it in my little chopper and there is no avoiding the onion tears. I started chopping these, my eyes teared up, so it's just the joy of chopping onions. Let them fall in. Hopefully I can fit all these and not have to do two steps. Looks like I might have to. Yeah, I don't have enough room. So I'm gonna have to do two steps, but I'll show you. Let me show you the results of one at least and what they turn into. So we got that. I'm going to place my lid on. Come over here. Okay. So I had to move my station over a little bit. The sun was messing with the lighting a little bit. So here I give you a better view now. We're going to put the lid on and hopefully it'll sit correctly. There, it locked in, so that's correct. And I'm going to put the blender on, plug it in. And what was great was the pressure cooker was actually sitting here. I was able to move the whole thing over to get more room where I needed it in this case. So I'm going to run this. I'm going to open this and the onion tears are going to start right away. But you can see it's minced pretty good. It almost looks like a salsa minced. And this will break down more as it's cooking. You'll never even feel or taste the onion unless there are some big chunks, but it tastes good in the end. I, I love it. So I'm going to do round two with these as well. Put this in a separate dish. Time to let off some steam.
Let's take a look inside. Oh, that looks awesome. Time to skin them. So now we're going to take them out. See inside. I'm just going to pick it up with some tongs. You can let them cool down too. So I'm going to take a few out. Some of these might fall apart as they're falling apart right now. You can see makes for easy picking off. The other thing I like to do is you can literally just take your tongs, push the skin down, and then just lightly pull off and drop right into the blender. Lightly pull off. Be very, very delicate with that part because you don't want to bring any skins with you. Like that skin is sticking a little bit, but we're going to pull it apart just lightly. And then just pull our skin, I mean pull the squash off, right off of the skin. It really helps to push the skin down and press it against whatever surface you're working on, in my case the cutting board, and just pull it off. You'll have a little bit of the squash remaining, it's really hard to get it off. Some other squashes will let you take everything, but these are a little bit more picky, they're tougher to get everything without the skin. A little bit of skin there but I'll drop that off and then just put this in. I kind of find it relaxing doing this. So push it down and then pull it off and a little chunk of skin, just pinch that. It's really not a big deal. If you get skin in there too, you won't taste it in the end with all the blending and the re-cooking again. So we'll take this step by step and I'll show you the results. So now we have a good amount of the squash in the blender. You can see how much we've gone through so far. So the top of that, and still have another one here. But the next thing I wanted to show you was we're going to add canned chicken broth. Makes it easier for blending, good flavor. You can use vegetable, you can ju use just regular water if you wish but I like using the chicken broth. So, put the lid on, turn it my way, get the blender, and we start blending. Okay, so we'll keep adding until we fill this up and we'll keep adding broth. So far we did about half a can. We can always add more, but in the end I'm going to use two cans for everything. I added a little bit more of the squash. I'm going to add the rest of the can of the chicken broth. Put my lid back on. So what you're trying to do is you're trying to make it uh, pretty soupy, well it depends on your opinion, you know, your thoughts, but you can make it um, on the more brothy side or more on the thick uh, soup side, and it's just a matter of your preference, you can add more or less chicken broth, um, but I like kind of that middle in between, it's, it's not too brothy, it's not too thick. So, and it's, it's all about a judgment of I at this point. But do remember that it will thicken up as we start with our next step. You can always add a little bit more water or broth if you wish, but I try to get everything done in the beginning, that way it's all cooked together. Okay, so the next step I'm gonna take is, we have some of the squash remaining inside the water. 
So I'm just gonna strain it, strain it out. It's gonna sit in there. Excess water will overflow, which is fine. Place this right back in the pressure cooker. And you see, we have a good collection here too. I might pick out a few of those skins, but again, it's not gonna hurt anything. So, and we'll keep going from here. I'll keep adding these to the blender and keep, I added one chicken broth so far and I had to add one more chicken broth and then we'll continue our next step from there. So our next step, we're going to be adding our minced onion and minced garlic into the container and we'll saute that. I prefer to use olive oil. You can use any olive oil you want or any kind of oil in general, but I prefer olive oil. And I just give a nice good coating on the bottom. Really won't hurt you to add more, but less, it's, it's always better to have more. So, and so we start, let's add some onion. All the onion goes in. It does seem like a lot, but it'll be good. Now here's our garlic. I use separate spoons for everything so you don't mix flavors and so the onion, and, I'm sorry, the garlic in here stays fresh and I might scare some people. This is one, one heap of garlic and we're going to do another heap of garlic. For one, I, for the two acorn squashes, I did one heaping he spoonful. For two, sorry, four acorn squashes, I did two, as you see, see right here. You could always add more. I love garlic. So, and now on the pressure cooker, we're gonna set it. <clears throat> so we go into, we have a sear and saute mode. I'm gonna press that and press start. That'll start heating it up. It's just like cooking on a normal pan on the stove. Like I said, again, everything in one, which I love. And I didn't have to do any cleaning, just poured out the water and uh, put my new ingredients in. So that'll start sizzling and we'll take some more videos of that once it starts sizzling. Now we have the garlic and onion cooking. You can see it bubbling a little. What you want to do is you want to get the onion a slight hint of brown color in them and then you'll know that's a good caramelized color and we can turn it off and we'll start adding more ingredients at that point. It's been about eight minutes. We're still cooking. And you can see that the onion has gotten a little bit more on the pink side, but we're looking for that light brown. We are almost there. So it's starting to lose its pink color a little bit more. You'll see little hints of brown in there. Even the smell of it, it, you could judge it two ways. Either it smells a little bit on the burnt side, or you could say it smells on the sweet side. It depends on your sensitivity. First time I did it, I thought I, I was burning it, but then when I looked and saw what, ha what was happening, then I saw it was becoming caramelized onions, which is more on the sweet side. So once you started to get that sweet or slight burnt smell, I stirred it one more time and now you can see the little patches of where it's cooked more thoroughly and that's exactly what you want. So now this is ready for its next step. Okay, so now we're in our last step. You can see that everything is nicely sauteed. There's really good smells. So let that drop to the bottom. Our first step is we're adding, this was extra that I couldn't uh, keep in the blender as I kept going. So I'm going to add this, and we're going to get all of that out. Every last morsel. You don't want to waste anything. Okay, so I got that. Here's my other collection in the blender. I'm going to hold this down. This might splash a little, let's hope not. There we go. Pour that all in. Get every last drop we can. Get it off the blades. 
put that aside. Let's get some more out of here. Every last drop. For not being left-handed, I'm doing pretty good at this. Okay. There we go. All right, now here's the fun part. What spices do we put in? So, I am not one to measure. I'm all about what I see is what I kind of judge. So, first thing I'm gonna add is regular black pepper. Just give it a nice coating on top. Now, that's pretty thick, so I'm gonna keep adding and that should be good, right there. Next, I'm gonna add cinnamon, ground cinnamon. Love cinnamon. So, but it can be pretty powerful. Just gonna give a nice coating on top, and that's good enough for now. Next one, I'm gonna add, I'm using some Himalayan pink salt. nutmeg. Nutmeg can be pretty sensitive on how you cook with it. I tend to use less nutmeg because it, it is a very powerful spice. And that's about all I'm going to use, just a few sprinkles. But again, to your uh, favorite flavors, it's up to you. Now the last thing I'm using is pumpkin spice. It has a little bit of what we've already used, but some other spices as well. So we'll add some of that. And that should be good. Now, the last thing, this is totally up to you. I'm adding ground cayenne pepper. I love just a little bit of kick in some of my foods and cookings. I, but it's totally up to you. If you don't like it spicy, you can completely eliminate this. And I'm running out. So we're going to probably add the rest of this. And... Just gives it that nice extra flavor. All right, this is where we stir the rest of it. Start together. Until it just goes in. And one last thing I'm gonna add, once I stir all this in, I'm gonna add one more ingredient. So let's get this stirred really quick, nicely. Gives it a little bit of a different color too. Leave that there. The last thing I'm going to add is buttermilk. It gives it a really creamy texture. Just that last little step that tastes so good. I'm just going to add, and it's all by eye. It's up to you. One, and then two. That seems like enough. And just stir that in, stir it together. Just thickens it a tiny, I mean, sorry, um, thins it a tiny bit, but it'll help everything come together. Mm, I can already smell everything. It smells so good. All right, so the last step we take is we're going to take our lid and we're going to put it right back on. I'm going to plug this in again. I unplugged it quickly because the saute um, helps the, when you're in saute mode, it cools it down a little quicker. Last thing I'm going to do is chicken and I'm going to do that for, for two acorn squashes we did eight minutes. So this time I'm probably going to bump it up to, oh, let me press cook time before I lose my chance. I'm going to put it down to, let's make it, we'll give it th three extra minutes. So, okay, so three extra minutes. I had to, I had to double check. Oh, and it started. And last thing, I almost forgot, but I pointed it out, is pressing your 
release tab back. And let's see what we create in a few minutes. So excited! Time to release the steam. Let's open up and see what we've created. That looks awesome and it smells so good. I'm so excited. Let's get the let's get this in some bowls. Thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Definitely hit that like button and subscribe to my channel and we'll have more fun with more tasty recipes in the future. The best thing to have with acorn squash soup is cheese and crackers. Either just to enjoy on the side or dipping inside, which is my favorite thing to do. Thanks.